Okay, this is a video experiment for the 2022 Energy Science and Technology Conference, ESTC. This is based on the wheel work of nature. We have the coil that was used originally in the wheel work of nature work and also the, the primary. This coil system we've done a vector network analysis on. That was part of the, um, the conference proceedings. And so we measured it, we characterized it, we looked at the coil um, in one coil and two coil configuration. So just using this coil as the extra coil and then also using it as a primary and a secondary. And that's covered in the conference presentation. Now we're going to show that coil, how that operates and to produce the, the World Work of Nature results, which appears on AM Innovations website, which is the fractal fern discharge. So that is a discharge first shown by Eric Dollard in the 90s. It appears, the famous picture appears on the front of um, the uh, Secrets of Cold Electricity, Free Energy Secrets of Cold Electricity by Peter Lindemann. And here we've got a live demonstration um, of that fractal fern discharge. So it produces a fractal image. So the streamers of the discharge have um, primary tendrils, they have secondary tendrils, um, uh, uh, tertiary tendrils, and it is a self similar self repeating pattern. There's obviously a lot more than that on the website. And to drive that, we're going to be using this um, portable generator um, set up. So here we've got the AM Innovations mini generator. That's a complete generator unit. I'll bring the camera in closer to it so we can have a look at what's there. Um, and also we've got a dedicated HT supply there as well. That's six kilovolt. That's two, four, and six kilovolts at up to two kilowatts and this generator can produce it's got a pair of currently it's got a pair of three 500 ZG tubes in there so it's each of those are good for about um, just under a kilowatt each so it's about four kilovolts about two and a half kilowatts output and we drive that from uh, we can drive that from a Variac or we can drive that from an SCR inside. And the whole unit together will produce the fractal fern discharge. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring the camera in closer and then we'll actually just have a look at uh, what's inside these and then I will do a demonstration um, of the discharge you get from this system. I've moved the camera in closer to the dedicated generator unit and we're going to have a look inside and also have a look at the front panel and how this works. So the generator is fully self-contained. It's uh, based on uh, a pair of tubes. Uh, the three, these are three 500 ZG tubes, power triodes. You, there are other power triodes the, that also fit this and also you can use these with the tetrodes as well, like the Ampere X tetrodes and also the um, iMac 4400 A's will also go in here. So there's a quite a good range of tubes that fit this, fit this format. Um, and these are essentially can be used in a number of different uh, variations. You can reconfigure this to run as a linear amplifier with, a, with, a, with a, obviously a drive stage and an exciter um, to drive the tubes. Or you can run this as I'm using it currently, which is set up as a Class C Armstrong oscillator. Uh, you have cooling, cooling towers, so air comes up um, through these, keep them, keep them cool, and heat sinks on the top to keep the, the anode to the tubes cool. On this side, you've got um, power supply, so it has its own HT supply. This is a four kilovolt 1.2 kilowatt inverter and 
that you can use that for quite a wide range of experiments it's a fairly good HT source we're not going to use it in this experiment because we need something with with more power and lower modulation frequency uh, because this is an inverter it runs at around about somewhere around about uh, 20 kilohertz we want something down in the in the hundreds of hertz underneath there there is a toroidal transformer um, which supplies the the heater there's quite a large uh, heater power required so normally they are five volts at about 14 amps each so you need a supply which is can do five volts at least five volts or at almost 30 amps so there's a there's a fairly large toroidal transformer underneath and that is controlled by a variac from the front panel and then on the output you've got this um, tuning vacuum variable tuning capacitor that's four kilovolts it's a, tw a 10 to 1200 picofarad tuning capacitor we're using that because we're using this demonstration um, as a as a two coil tesla transformer we're using a, a tuned primary circuit with with that's constructed from the inductance of the of the primary coil in parallel with this tuning capacitor and that allows us to run this system very efficiently as a class C Armstrong oscillator which we can tune um, by adjusting this capacitor and we use a pickup coil um, so it is also auto tuning to the place that we tune it to uh, which is very convenient um, for this kind of demonstration and at the back here also we have a discharge unit so if we were using large capacitors on here we need to discharge them safely and a pair of vacuum relays there basically to switch that that in and discharge any any high voltage capacitors that might be connected to the output that's particularly useful for example if the system stops oscillating for some reason you can you, you can left with very high potentials on the output capacitor which bleed away very slowly so it's good to have that um, if needed we won't need it in this experiment but this is this system as this generator is designed as a as a multifunctional portable system which at four kilovolts at 1.2 kilowatts makes it very handy for a very wide range of, of tesla experiments so that is the generator um, i'm just going to move the camera over so we can take a look at the power supply so this is the ht supply that we're using now the reason we're using a separate ht supply and not the inverter in the generator over here is because we want to get the the correct relationship between the magnetic and the dielectric fields of induction at the discharge we need a low modulation frequency so uh, the line if we don't rectify the line input then essentially we are ending up with um, 120 hertz for if it's um, full wave um, or 60 hertz if it is, this is uh, running on a US supply in the UK it will be 50 hertz so that gives us the correct envelope for the generator to get the right relationship between those two induction fields and hence then we get the right discharge so that's why we're using this ancillary supply this is based around two high voltage transformers here and you can control it through a high power SCR or it can also be controlled directly by the Variac so there are two ways of controlling the power to the transformers um, then we're using a, uh, a voltage doubler or correctly a level shifter which will shift the level upwards and give us about up to about 1.5 1.6 times um, what we would get out from a single transformer these transformers can be configured so you can run them both in parallel you can run them in series and you can run it with and without the doubler so it gives two four and six kilovolts at about two kilowatts maximum each of these transformers can be run at a kilowatt 
um, and that gives for quite a flexible supply at the right modulation, at the right line frequency, to create the desired effect with the coil. With that coil geometry, the coil, uh, the wheel work of nature coil is just a standard um, two coil uh, Tesla transformer. It's not designed with any specific um, special ge geometric properties, like for example, uh, the golden ratio or a particular note of winding, um, distance between windings, that kind of thing. It's a very standard coil designed for high voltage magnification and so we get, we, we get a nice large discharge at the other end. Okay, so just moving this out, we just take a look at the, at the front panels. Let's wind this down. Bring that down. And then we can have a look at the front panels. So here is the, is the generator again. And we've got um, the Variac for the heater. Uh, we have HT power. This We're not using that on this because that shows us how much power is being consumed by the HT. And we're not going to use that HT supply inverter at this time. And then we can measure um, uh, the heater, voltage and current, grid current, plate current, and the HT uh, rectified DC kilovolts at the output. We've got the primary tuning capacitor, that was the vacuum variable capacitor, discharge, the grid bias, which we need to adjust, particularly when we're using it as an oscillator, and the HT supply. Um, we won't be using that one in this experiment. And for the power supply, we are using, that's the SCR control. Uh, we can use a remote control, which we can select, which is good when we want to stand further away from the system, running at very high power. Uh, we can adjust output of the SCR, turn it on and off. And then we can select transformers. We can select transformer phasing, that's in anti-phase, that's in phase, and that's off. So it gives us a good range of selectability uh, in the way that we use it. So for this, we have got two transformers in parallel with the doubler. So that gives us nominally about to about, depending on loading, about 3.2 to 4 kilovolts at up to 2, two kilowatts. And nominally the 3500Zs are rated to 4 kilovolts with um, maximum output power around about 1 to 1.2 kilowatts which is exactly what we need for this experiment. And for the coil, we'll just take a little bit more detailed look at that. Let's just move the camera to the coil. So we've got the output. All of these jumpers here configure how we're using it. And as I said, we're using it as a Class C Armstrong oscillator. Um, so we've got the, the, the HT connected, we've got the primary tuning capacitor connected, and we've got the these to select the configuration of how the tubes are connected. Um, these are the primary cables that um, supply the primary coil here. We've got the pickup coil, which is used to provide feedback for the for the oscillator that comes out the BNC and back in. And then of course we've got the, the secondary coil. If I just pan around, there we've got the secondary coil. And this system is, is, is movable. So it can be, that was part of the vector network analysis, is to be able to change the magnetic coupling coefficient between, in a two coil system. Um, and then of course we've got, a, we've got a discharge probe here so we get a nice high field intensity um, to give us a good discharge. So that is the complete system. What we'll do now is we're going to, I'm going to move the camera back out and power up and we see what kind of result that we can get from this. Okay, so I've moved the camera back um, so we can see the whole system. I've turned on the generator and the HT supply. The HT supply will be powered off with the remote control and the tubes have now warmed up. Um, there is a up to five volts 
28 amps, so right down the line. Uh, we set the grid bias to about two thirds and the primary tuning is already set. So I simply turn on, wind up a little bit until we get a breakout. So we can see it's very small at the moment, fractal firm, we're all running stably, it's about 500 watts of power. Wind up from there. Just check our tuning. It's about right, not good bias. Yeah, that's a good position. So it's a nicely developed fractal firm discharge. We've got a primary, secondary, and tertiary streamers. Self repeating, self similar. We're running at 1.2 kilowatts. Single transformer. Nice and stable. You've got the background hum there. You can hear this is obviously running on UK line voltage, so it's running at 50 hertz. We see the little neon bulb in the front there, also showing the, the tension around the coil. We can wind it back down. There, there is just very small breakout. Wind it back up. As ferns start developing. It's a nice, well developed. Running at about three kilovolts. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera in closer so we get a nice close up view of the discharge, and I'm going to run that, then run the system again. I've moved the camera in close now so we are right in front of the discharge here is the discharge point uh, on the end of the secondary coil and we've got the blackboard behind so we get a very good definition of the discharge so I'm just going to repeat what I previously did use the remote control turn on wind up until we just get a slight breakout just there you see the start of the fern that's only 200 watts we wind up from there, we start to see the definition of the fractal fern, already very well developed. We're only running at 500 watts, take that up from there, it really starts to grow quite large. 1.2 kilowatts we're running at. Again, very good definition, um, primary, secondary and tertiary streamers, quite fat and hot, so there's plenty of power behind those streamers. Nice and stable, with a very smooth background. We're oscillating here at around about 2.8 megacycles. This is the lower parallel resonant mode of the coil that we're running on. Only need to use one transformer. Powered by the SCR. A bit more power, it starts to get too hot in the middle. We wind back down. Just pause for a second, allow the system to cool. Check our transformers, they're only just lukewarm, or our single transformer. I'll probably switch over to the other one. Allow the other one to have a bit of a rest. We come back up again. Okay, just set the transformer correctly. Come up. About get 1.2 kilowatts. Very nice. Very unusual not been demonstrated or generally seen since Eric Dollar did his experiment back in the 90s. Nice 
nice and stable. You've got that background 50 hertz hum in the background. Um, the tubes are nicely adjusted with quid bias, so there's no crackling as they stop oscillating and restart oscillating. I'll just check the tuning. The oscillation is not very pure. There's a very good position. One point two kilowatts. Fractal firm discharge from the wheel work of nature. So the electric, the dielectric, and the magnetic fields of induction form a very specific relationship, which relates in this inner. What I see is the inner workings of electricity. They start showing you this fractal, this fractal nature, which is a part of the inner workings of the relationship between those two induction fields. Nice and stable. All a product of the frequency that this core is running at, 2.8 megacycles, plus the modulation. Rate, plus the unipolar power coming from the tubes is what generates the fractal firm discharge. You see, we can run it very stably at this power. Everything running straight down the line. The tubes very happy. Very little plate dissipation. All the powers, the efficiency is quite high in this oscillator. Most of it's been put into the discharge. About 70 75 percent of the power from the HT supply will be coming into the discharge. Great, that is the fractal firm discharge from the wheel work of nature. So, in quick summary, that was the wheel work of nature experiment showing the fractal firm discharge that very unusual discharge that results from the specific relationship between the dielectric and magnetic fields of induction that you can bring about through the specific frequency of the coil that you use, the mode the, that you use to drive the two coil system and the modulation rate coming from the HT supply through the generator. Combine all those three together and you can get the the fractal firm discharge. So there's a lot more information on this on my website, the wheel work of nature, several wheel work of nature experiments there where I go into a lot more detail about the setup and the characteristics and there's lots of photos and videos there also and going into more detail about this experiment and this is the experiment through a portable setup. So the idea of this um, demonstration was to first of all show the characteristics of the coil, then show the characteristics of the, of the generator and the HT together, and put them all together, um, and then that's the kind of result that you can get. As I said, there's much more detail on the AM Innovations website at aminnovations.com. Great.